Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut. Now, today we're looking at the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator. This is actually a really, really powerful tool that if you don't know uh, what it does, you really should get to grips with it. If you do, then hopefully you'll learn something new. Um, as you can see here, I've got 10 shapes on the screen. Each one I have applied a shape mode or a Pathfinder uh, to the shape, and you can see the result here. And I'm just quickly going to take you through them. Um, so if I just quickly remove those and Voila, new layer, fresh, ready to go. What all this is, is just a star shape on top with a red square underneath it. And that's duplicated 10 times. So let's dive right in. The first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the Unite uh, tool, I suppose you'd call it. Click that button there with the two shapes selected. And what that does is that unites the two shapes together, merging their sort of points um, into one shape uh, and selecting the outermost of those points and using that as the path to follow. Everything on the inside has actually been um, obliterated. You can see that there's no actual paths now for the rest of this star shape along here. That's been united into one shape with one outlining path, um, which can be useful if you want to merge several shapes together. Um, you've created like an intricate design and that you, there's no way you could have created that with one path and just doing it manually. Um, so the next one is minus front. And if you select both shapes, what that will do is uh, it will take the shape on top and as if you've cut around it, remove that shape um, and leave you with the segments of the shape that was underneath. Everything that was not overlaid by the shape that was on top. And you can see now these are actually individually controllable segments of the red square. So the next tool is the uh, intersect tool. Um, and what this does is if you hit that, um, it does uh, everywhere that the top shape intersected with the one beneath it, as in overlaid it was visible on top of um, it remains with that on screen and creates a path of it and it removes everything from the shape underneath and the shape on top that didn't intersect um, with that path so if you see if you go inside now that this is a hard it's not a mask it's a hard-coded path um, that is in the shape of whatever was on top minus the intersections of what was underneath uh, okay, so the next one is exclude. And what that does is that removes the um, path from the shape on top of the other one and um, keeps the paths from the shape underneath and any section that wasn't overlaying the shape underneath. So as you can see, it's cut out this star shape, but only where it overlapped with the others. Um, so basically it excludes the shape that was on the top from the shape that was underneath. Um, so those are the main four tools inside Pathfinder. Those are the simplest. Uh, the next six are a bit more complicated, but still very easy to grasp. Um, I know the basics of them. I don't know all of their intricacies, but I know enough to be getting on with. So if we just click divide here, what this one does, it at first glance looks like it hasn't done anything. Um, but if we double click inside this group now, you'll realize that every single place where the two paths, not the shapes, the two paths overlapped, um, has now become a separate shape. It's been sliced into equal segments wherever there was an overlapping path. Um, so for example, all the points of the star are now separate. The body of the star is separate to those. Um, the remnants of the square underneath was separate. Um, and every single one is individually manipulatable. Now you can see the, where the red square underneath the main body of the star wasn't visible, that's actually been removed. So that's very, very useful if you want to slice up and individually control all of your segments. Uh, the next one is trim, which does something very similar, except um, it doesn't take overlapping segments. So you can see, for example, here we can control the individual parts of the square that were visible underneath. But what we can't do, the shape that remains on top is actually still one full shape. Um, and that's because um, what happens with trim is it just slices around everything. Um, and sort of any places where paths overlap that aren't separate to that, it remains whole, um, which is slightly different, but still just as useful. Um, so the next one is merge. And what this does is it basically groups them together, but creates it one path and one layer. So if we were to go inside, we can still individually manipulate all of these, but it doesn't actually cut them up. Um, it just merges them two into one path with, with sort of different colors in each segment. Um, so that is the merge tool, the crop tool, Oops, I'm still selected inside that group there. Uh, the crop tool basically takes the shape of the um, the shape underneath and applies it to the visibility of the shape above. So, so you can see, for example, all the points which didn't have a shape underneath them, they're still there. They still exist as a path. However, they've taken uh, what was 
not visible of the square underneath and applied it to the shape of the, of the star on top. Uh, very useful. The next tool is outline, does exactly what it says on the tim, takes all of your shapes that you've created and turns them into outlines, still retaining the color, which is very, very nice actually. Um, and the last tool here is the minus back. And what this does is the exact opposite of the minus front. It takes the shape from the back and cuts it out from the shape from the front, leaving only the things which didn't overlap, um, which is the opposite of the minus front one from before, which took the front and took it away from the back, um, leaving the bits which didn't overlap. Now, that is the basics um, of the Pathfinder tool. You, the, When this really comes into its own light and comes into its own standing is when you're using it in a live project. It really, really helps with creating intricate shapes and might be more difficult to draw from scratch with the Path tool. For exists for existence, for example, rather for existence, um, we draw a square here, and say I would take a curved, perfect curve out of this square. Now we could individually go in and draw a path and hit shift and curve it and get it perfectly right, or what we could do is just take a circle, um, find an area that we want the center of the circle to be, say roughly there. Hold Alt and Shift so we can scale it up and say, okay, that red curve is where I want to remove from that square here. So we can just take both those shapes and hit minus front. And what it does is it actually creates a path that's removed the circle from the square, giving us a nice, easy way to create shapes like that, which otherwise we'd have to go in, sort of do this, make sure it was about perfect, find it all the way over there, kind of go almost like that. That seems okay, but it's not a perfect circle. We can see that this is a perfectly circular curve and this one's actually a bit of a squished square more than a perfect circle. Um, so that's really where it can be used. Um, now, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, that's great. Um, consider subscribing. It really does help. If you didn't, that's also fine. There's some great people on YouTube that can probably help you out more than I can. Um, just search Pathfinder in Illustrator and you'll probably find it the same way you found this video. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope you found it useful and I will see you all next Next time, unless you decided not to stay, in which case um, you probably didn't make it this far into the video anyway. So I don't know who I'm talking to. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.